What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more coverage on Marvel Spider-Man 2. It's been a while since I've given you guys an update on the current state of the game because I feel like we'll be getting something from Sony very soon. Spider-Man No Way Home is set to be released this holiday in December and it's recently been announced by one of the devs at Crystal Dynamics that Spider will be making his way to Avengers on PlayStation consoles at the end of the year. And I have a nagging suspicion that Sony is making Square release it at that time to capitalize off the hype of No Way Home. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get an official announcement for Marvel Spider-Man too around that time as well. It's just smart marketing on their part, because you just know the leaked suits from the movie are gonna make it in the game. But anyways, before we dive into today's topic, I gotta give a major shout out to today's sponsor, Red Magic. If you've been following this channel, then you know I'm a big advocate of taking mobile gaming to the next level, and Nubia has aided me in fulfilling that fantasy with their latest device, the Red Magic 6R. Enjoy seamlessly fluid movements for your action-packed games and dominate the leaderboard with its 144Hz 6.6-inch FHD A-Mode display that goes up to a staggering 630Hz touchscreen refresh rate. We're talking a super smooth, responsive experience at your fingertips, and to ensure the best internet connections, the 6R comes equipped with the exclusive Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 where you'll have access to the fastest and most stable connections wherever you go. And if you're a stickler for taking pictures, Nubia is stepping up their game when it comes to photography by including a 64MP Ultra HD AI quad camera along with a 8MP ultra wide angle, a 5MP Pixel Mac Pro, and a 2MP Pixel depth of field where you can take beautiful pictures of all the magical moments you experience. Since we're on the topic of Spider-Man, I know a lot of you are wondering what kind of phone you'll need to handle the upcoming Marvel Future Revolution game. Well, this phone would do that and then some with its awesome features. For tight controls, we have the 400Hz shoulder triggers and VC liquid cooling graphene composite heat dissipation to allow your phone to handle the most demanding games. So definitely jump on it now. You can do so by clicking the link that will be provided in the description. But yeah guys, it looks like Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be coming to us sooner than later. I know I mentioned that it might be revealed around the time the trailers for No Way Home comes out, but Sony recently announced that they're coming out with the State of Play event this Thursday or today depending on when I upload this video. So there's a possibility that we could get a reveal trailer, and if we do, it'll most likely confirm or debunk what I talk about in this video. Although Sony and Insomnia Games have yet to announce Marvel Spider-Man 2, we know it's been in some form of development since January 2019. Like we can't lie, Insomniac has been on a roll with their game development cycle. They came out with Spider-Man Miles Morales last November, and they recently released Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart last month. Which may seem crazy considering how close the two projects were released, but Sony has been making some power plays since they acquired the studio. They've expanded the team into two, so not only do they have a team based in California, they also have one based in North Carolina. And as I mentioned, one of those teams just released a new Ratchet game. But since they released Spider-Man Miles Morales, they've been very tight-lipped about their upcoming project. That being said, Insomniac's event senior animator Alex Zamke took to Twitter to suggest that the studio is in fact working on Spider-Man 2. This tweet came in the form of a response after IGN senior editor Jonathan Dornbush gave credit to Insomniac for their consistent number of successful projects they released on the PlayStation 5. He said, and I quote, And now it's time to rest. No rest. Always make games. And he followed it up by saying, For clarity, I did not work on Rift Apart. I worked on Miles Morales and then moved on to a project that has been redacted. Insomniac never sleeps. That's why the name. So that tweet not only suggests that Insomniac is always working around the clock to deliver outstanding games on behalf of PlayStation, it also suggests that Alice is hard at work on Marvel Spider-Man 2, especially considering the fact that he was recently involved with development on Spider-Man Miles Morales. And if I'm not mistaken, he was also involved on the first project, so he has a good idea of how gameplay for Spider-Man should be implemented. Now, while I absolutely love Spider-Man Miles Morales, it kind of felt like the devs played it safe with some of the features. Miles' bioelectricity moves felt more akin to what we had gotten in Spider-Man 1 with the electrically insulated suit, and the way he solved puzzles with that specific power felt very similar to what was done in Batman Arkham Origins with the shock gloves. But despite the unoriginal features, Insomniac was still able to deliver a pretty solid game and story overall. Speaking of features, we gotta talk about the potentially leaked story and gameplay features that was posted by an anonymous source on Reddit. And this thing was posted over a month ago, and at first I didn't think it was worth looking too deep into, but after getting so much mounting evidence and details, they seem to validate a lot of things that were mentioned in this post. I mean, I'm still gonna take it with a very small grain of salt, but at the same time, I wanna elaborate on what was mentioned, because there are some pretty interesting things going on with this. But anyways, the anonymous Reddit user says, and I quote, I can't disclose how I have this information. If you don't believe this, that is fine. I just want to let the fandom know what I know. First of all, development is further along than most people think. 
COVID obviously hurt the process, so they're really just focusing on gameplay and haven't really recorded anything yet. And I just want to interject and say that there have been some talks from the voice actors of Marvel Spider-Man. I remember in an interview, Peter Parker's voice actor Yuri Lowenthal mentioned that he was in fact prepping to get back in the motion capture studio, but things were running a little slow due to the pandemic. And we got a post from Miles' voice actor suggesting that they were working on something. We even got a post from the new face model for Peter Parker where he basically confirmed that he was doing a facial scan for an upcoming project. And funny enough, the place where he went to do that scan is the same place where they did the facial scans for the first game and Spider-Man Miles Morales. So I think it's a no-brainer that they are in fact going to be starting on the motion capture performance very soon, especially now that things are opening up and the vaccinations are in full effect. Anyways, the poster goes on to say that the story will totally revolve around a symbiote, but Harry won't be Venom. Apparently it's a fake out and Insomniac is just using him as a way to get the symbiote on Peter. Norman Osborn won't be the goblin yet, however he will play a huge role but they seem to be saving that for the future. Wraith will play a role as a reoccurring boss and the lizard is obviously playing as well as some of the other villains. The user says he doesn't know who the big bad is but it's something big. And I think we can all guess that it'll be Venom or more so Eddie Brock's version of the character. If you've been keeping up with all the smaller details and easter eggs within the games, you may have noticed that he's mentioned quite a few times. We see his name featured on a Daily Bugle farewell card that Peter was given after he departed from the company, and we also see him credited on some of the Daily Bugle online articles in Spider-Man Miles Morales. So Eddie Brock very much exists within this particular universe, and he's currently still working for the Daily Bugle, which could ultimately play a major part in him becoming the Venom we're familiar with. It's still up in the air on what kind of relationship Eddie had with Peter Parker. Since Insomniac seems to be borrowing a lot of elements from the Ultimate Comics such as the introduction of Miles Morales, many are hoping he'll be childhood friends with Eddie like he was in those issues. And there are some like myself who hope to see a mixture of both the original Earth 616 and Ultimate Eddie Brock, similar to what was done in Spectacular Spider-Man. I know I mentioned that Harry could possibly be the first host for the symbiote, but it looks like he could just be the conduit that aids in creating it, since the Reddit user is basically saying that he'll be a bait and switch. Judging from the first game's post credit scene, the symbiote seems to be very much alive and will more than likely be looking to bond with a powerful host, which will most likely be Peter. I know it hasn't really been explained how it was created, but I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Kirk Connors was somehow able to get a sample of Peter's blood to do so. And that'll most likely be why the symbiote wants to bond with Peter before it ultimately starts seeking out hosts with a mutual hatred for him, i.e. Eddie Brock. But moving on, the user says that the map has also been expanded, but they're not sure to what scale. Miles will be fully playable and the story will switch between him and Peter at various points. You play as Peter for the majority of the game though. Miles still has a lot to do in the story as well as his own side missions. Once you beat the campaign, you unlock the ability to freely switch between the two. And many have suspected that this game might have multiplayer based on the simple fact that Miles will be playable. And Somniac has recently tweeted that it is hiring for assorted positions for a multiplayer project, including roles for creative director, story lead, and a system designer for the multiplayer aspects. As to if that could apply to this upcoming project is anyone's guess. I'd honestly like to see this game stay within the single player genre, since the formula has worked perfectly for the previous installments, but I'm not going to completely rule out the possibility that Insomniac might try to tap into that multiplayer component when it comes to controlling Peter and Miles. I just want to see how well the two play alongside each other now that both have their own unique skill sets and techniques. We got that a little bit in Spider-Man Miles Morales, but it was nothing major since it was the first mission of the game, and I like to think that was done deliberately because Insomniac wants to show more of that partnership in Marvel Spider-Man too. It'll probably be very similar to how Peter and Venom's missions were in the Ultimate Spider-Man game. But moving on, the Reddit user says that the black suit will have its own mechanics and there will be an upgrade tree as well as several unique abilities like a rage mode, etc. They're also being told that Insomniac is putting more of an emphasis on the suits in this game. Several suits will actually factor into the story, like how the anti-ox suit worked. Insomniac also wants to make sure players don't feel like they have to start over. There'll be an option to transfer your save files from the first game to have gadgets and upgrades already unlocked. This will also transfer the suits from the first two games, which the Reddit user concluded that's all they knew so far. So as you hear it, it sounds like Insomniac is going to take a few pages from Spider-Man Web of Shadows with the way they go about developing gameplay for the black suit, which I totally suspect that they would because they want to take what was unique from the older Spidey games and fine tune them to make the features feel better. Like that was the biggest Achilles heel about the older entries. The developers had a lot of great ideas, but unfortunately they didn't get the time needed to fully implement them. But thankfully the days of rushed Spider-Man games are long gone and Sony has actually given Insomniac as much time as they need to deliver 
deliver a solid experience for the webhead. I think it was pretty much a given that we'd see all the suits from the previous installment make a return, which means we'll be looking at an expansive game closet full of suits to play around in. But it's awesome to know that some of the suits will be used within context of the story. Like other than the black anti ox suit which you had to play in during the last mission, the suits really served no real purpose other than the fact that Peter had to have it on during certain cutscenes. So I'd like to see Peter actually switch it up more to go with the game's narrative. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm a little late with this info, but I know you guys have been asking me to at least give my thoughts on it, so here you go. As I mentioned earlier, depending on when this video goes up, we may or may not see an actual reveal during the PlayStation State of Play for tomorrow, but hopefully we do. Anyways, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's legit, or do you think it's all hogwash? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I ask you to like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and followers on different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.